In this web tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix some common C sharp beginner mistakes. So I'm going to create a new project. You want to make sure it's Visual C sharp and it's a Windows form application and I'm going to change it to a more meaningful name. I'm going to call it common mistakes. A common mistake is when people start adding components. I'm going to pin it so you can see what's going on. Adding stuff to the form before I renamed it. Big mistake. Name the form before you add anything to it. So we're going to come here and I can change this name here or I can right click it and do rename which is what I prefer. And you may remember you put FRM in the beginning as a notation There we go. And you should say yes. If you say no, it gets ugly fast. So say yes. I'm going to click on the form and I'm going to quickly make sure it's A to Z. This is called your property. So I'm affecting the properties of this window or form. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to change a few things about it real quick. I'm going to change its text. And remember, text is what the user sees here. So I'm going to call it common mistakes and I'm also going to have its start position change to the center of screen so far so good I'm going to show you the first mistake is when people add components to the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text box and I'm going to put it right here okay and I'm going to right size it a little bit And then I'm going to add a label, and I'm going to put here. And people forget to name them. What they do is they start adding components before they rename them. So we're going to go rename some of these before we get carried away. I'm going to call it label number in. And I'm going to make its text say number in. And I'm going to rename this text box to be text number in. Beautiful. We're off to a good start. And you notice they're not quite lined up. So if you remember, I can click on this one. And I can hold down the control key and click it. Notice this has white box. This is a black box. And if you come up here, you can align along the bottom. There you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is drag a new label. Go right here. I'm going to call that number cubed. So what's going to happen is I'm going to enter a number and then I'm going to cube it. And I come down here and I'm going to I'm going to have a new text box and we're going to put it right about there. And I'm going to rename this one. Because I'm going to show the user the output and don't want them to enter it, I'm going to come down to where it says max length. I'm sorry, not max length. Read only. I'm going to set that to true. Now here's where people make a common mistake. They take a button and they put it on the screen. And then they double click into the button before they have a chance to rename it. So I'm going to come up here. So its name is button one. And I click into here. And then I go back to design and say, oh, I didn't rename it. So I hot click here. I go up to the name. And I'm going to call it BTN Cube. Now notice the name says BTN Cube, which is cool. And of course, we're going to have the text change it from button one to say cube. Now look what happens. I double click on it and the name of the code is button 1 here but on here it's called button cube. We have a disconnect. The code will work but you have it renamed it after you clicked on it and that causes a problem. But I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to change. 
So right here is a lightning bolt. You click on the events and see how it says button click. I can come in here and just give it the name I did before, which is right here, button cube. So type BTN cube. I hit enter and all's fixed. A second mistake people do is they don't declare their variables up front. So I want to be able to cube a number. So I don't know what the user is going to in enter, so I'm going to go with a double. So I'm going to declare a double, and I'm going to use Hungarian notation, and I'm going to call it number in. And we're going to give it a value of that. Where people make a lot of mistakes is IntelliSense comes up with some values. So what I'm going to do is take what it found. Why keep typing when it already has the answer? And if you remember, we want to convert to double whatever the user entered in TXT. Oh, I'm in caps. So TXT number in. And they think that's good enough. But notice the red squiggles go away and you think you're okay but you're not what happens is you're trying to convert the text box not the text that the user entered so you need to go back and do text another common mistake people think is they could put the code anywhere but you always usually want to put it in a click event to a button so now we're going to cube the number so we're done with the text box for now so we're going to say double number in equals double number in times three. So we took the text that was in this text box and made it a double. We did a calculation and now we need to put it back out to the screen. So some people think they can just do this. You cannot. It looks like it will work. Oh, we got a red squiggle. It doesn't. So what you need to do here is text number cubed dot text property. Text is always what you show the user inside of this object. And we want to put the two string. So here we convert from a text or a string to a double. I do a calculation and I need to take the double and convert it back to a text. I know it's a little confusing. It would have been nice if this said two texts, but a text is a string. Another common mistake people have, and I'm going to go back to design mode, is they click on one of these objects, not the button. So they double click here, and notice you're in text number in text change, and they put logic here. The logic needs to go for most of what we're going to do this semester in the button queue. We don't need to do it here. So please don't put any code unless I tell you to in the text change. Always put it in the button click for what the instructions say. So let's add a button. Let's do the wrong thing again. Put it here. We double click on it. And notice it renames it back at button one. And you're like, oh, I didn't want to that name. So what I need to do is come up here and no longer be on the events, be on the properties. So what I need to do is rename this button. So right now you're on the events. You click here on properties. You go up to the name. We're going to call it BTN exit. However, if we click on the event, the event is the same as, uh, it's like think of it as the action of what happens when you click on it. It still thinks it's called button one when we want to rename it. Also as a side note, another common mistake is people want to delete this code when there's nothing in it. Just leave it there. There's no damage leaving it there. If you leave it there, you're good. If you delete this piece of code, you're going to get into a problem and we're going to have to fix it. So I'll show you that in a few minutes. So let's get back to design. So what you do is you click on the button. You now go to events and you rename the button click one to be button exit. Beautiful. Oh, I didn't mean to click there. So we go back, click 
properties, we give his name exit, we give the text of exit. Now when I go to put code in it, look, I have the right name there. So we're going to do application dot exit. And don't forget, when you see a pink cube, it means it's a method or action to put the curly, uh, not curly, but the double parentheses. Oh, we didn't mean to hit that. Another common mistake people make is deleting code, which you see right here, how this came up is because I accidentally clicked on this text box and I think I don't want it, so I delete it thinking, get it out of here. And everything looks okay until I go to run it. I get an error here. And some people think they can click yes and it will run. It will not. This is like your check engine light comes on and it's telling you not to drive it. So say no. And see this right here? This tells you the problem. If you double click on it, it will bring you to where the problem is. And what happened is we deleted a piece of code called text number and text change and the code still thinks we need it. So how you can correct this is click on the error below like I showed you, bring you to that line of code, hit delete, and now that we deleted the code on the form, we're deleting it here and we should be all set to go. So let's run it. There we go. Let's, let's put a three and let's cube it and we got nine.